Hey guys, Targo Cycle and FPV here, and today we're working on the Turning Evolution uh, transmitter and what to do when your batteries are failing and you can't get it to turn on at all, okay? So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split, I'm gonna go ahead and just jump into split screening this right now. There we go. And the first thing we're gonna do is, this is actually a, a good functioning uh, evolution, but um, because I know some of you have the ones that don't work, I figured, well, we'll just go ahead and do this one anyway. It's gonna be somewhat of an upgrade, I guess, to get this done. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take this apart because uh, I, my hope was that we would um, be able to change the batteries out, but unfortunately, um, I contacted Hobby King about this, and they do not have any solution as far as changing the batteries out, uh, meaning they're not going to send replacement batteries. And we ordered ours as a wholesaler from Hobby King, and we did have five out of 40, which is a little concerning. We had five out of 40 come in bad. So um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and just get to it by unscrewing the battery, or uh, sorry, unscrewing the, um, the case. And let me get something to put these screws in so I can keep them organized. One second. Just use an old plastic container here. There we go. Okay. And so we're going to get to knocking this out. So I have done this already once before, but I didn't make a video on it. And what I did was I upgraded mine um, because I did get one of the ones that had the battery or I swapped it out for a customer that had one and I took his. And um, I decided to go ahead and work on making it to where it could use a, a LiPo, a standard LiPo that I could then charge and not have to wait to charge a controller, which I actually considered it to be somewhat of an upgrade, to be honest with you, because the one thing about these controllers that have built-in batteries, and this isn't the only brand that does, there's quite a few, even uh, Free Sky has one, I believe, um, is that uh, you have to charge a the controller then, right? And you can't use it while you're charging it, really. It's kind of cumbersome. So, all right, go ahead and take these uh, rubber uh, grips off here on each side. Just peel them back. And they'll pull right off. And then you still have some screws under here to get. So let's go ahead and get that. Got one over here. So I think that at the end of the day, even if you have a battery that's working, this is still kind of a pretty cool thing to do. Now I do not, I'm trying to remember if there was anything else I need to do and I don't believe so. I think that's pretty much it. So we're going to go ahead and get this ready, kind of just gently from the top, peel it back. And then what you can see here when we open it is what we're working with here. Okay. And <clears throat> so what we want to do is we want to get to these two batteries right here. But to do that and work safely with this, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the wire harness. And you'll see the wire harness is right here. Just go ahead and just gently disconnect the wire harness here. And when you do that, you can take this back piece out. And now you're at your uh, batteries here. And, and you've got, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear here uh, that you've got your batteries. And this is what is failing, right, on, on the, uh, on the uh, transmitters right now. The batteries are actually coming in dead. And they're not recharging. That's the biggest problem. So I'm going to pull these out. So let me take these two screws out. You can keep the harness and all that, just throw those in there, but those screws won't be used. And then, there you go, just pop that one out right there. And then let's take this one out. And then this one here. Okay, and now you've got these two out, okay. So what you want to do is if you want to test the um, actual uh, charge on here, and I'm going to go ahead and do that just because might as well. There's no harm in that. So let me go ahead and get to a spot where I can see it. It's not as easy as I was hoping to see this, but it's about four. We got about four, um, four volts, 3.8, 3.8. So this is the equivalent to a uh, 1S basically right here. And so <clears throat> that was the whole, whole thing I wanted to show you was that we've got a, basically an equivalent of 1S here. And what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and we want to combine, because here's where they're going to go in, right? And we want to combine these to make a 2S battery that can fit on the back of this so that we've got um, a LiPo axis. Now, <clears throat> on yours, I'm going to actually borrow the connection from here um, and make it work by cutting this off, okay? 
but on yours, uh, and, and I'm actually going to use both of them and then terminate the others. And I just do that because I like everything to kind of remain balanced on this. So here's what I'm going to do. But you're going to want to make sure that your batteries have no charge, and you're going to be very careful about what you do with this one, all right? So uh, here we go. And as you can see on the writing here, it is a um, 650 milliamp uh, uh, battery, 3.74 volts. So let's go ahead and just cut these. All right, I'm going to set these aside, and I'm going to actually shrink those down. Uh, heat shrink those down and close that connection off. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and do it like this. All right, so we're going to make these the same length. And I'm going to come over here and do the same thing here. So let me just try to keep it uniform. And don't cut them straight across. Separate them like this. And then there you go. One and two. All right, now I'm going to set these aside for right now, and we'll deal with that later. But what we want to do here is I'm going to actually use one side. Uh, for my positive and one for my ground and just bring them together and that's like I said It's just because it's I keep things pretty much balanced between the two You don't have to but it's the way I choose to do it once we remove these here and We've got these ready to go. What we're gonna do now is uh, Let me make sure that's all in there good. Okay, so now we're gonna grab the lipo and in this case I'm gonna be using the um, uh, a Quantum uh, 2s battery here <clears throat> and you can go with two options. You can either go with the using the balance lead or you can go with uh, using the banana plug here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the balance lead and I'm going to grab this here real quick, a little bag of these. And let me get one of these out and make sure this is going to be a good fit. And it is. That's perfect. Okay, so with this here, what we've got is we've got our ground. And we're going to go ahead and test the power real quick here just to show and make sure. So... We've got our ground here on the right, okay? And then we want is we want to get our full count of voltage. So we're gonna to go to our ground and we're gonna to go to our middle here, all right? And we're gonna to go to the outside. So what we know is we wanna basically tap in our ground on the far right, if you're looking at it this way, and we wanna tap in our red. So we're gonna use our black and our red here, all right? And so to do that, I'm gonna pull this off. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and get to soldering a little bit. So let me go ahead and turn the solder machine on. Let's clear up a little bit of the bench here. Get these out of the way. Okay, so <clears throat> what we wanna do now is, we know we've got, our, we've got our grooves right here, which is gonna match the grooves on the battery. And so <clears throat> we know this is gonna go this direction, which means that the black is gonna go on this side and then the red is gonna go over here and we're not really gonna worry about the middle at all, all right? So let's go ahead and get some wiring here and let me find what wiring I want to use that we would normally use. Take that one right there. All right. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. Okay. Now you can do this however you want. This is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna actually crop these off because I, I wanna use these ones instead. And so what we wanna do is we wanna give this an outside uh, plug here and then we're going to connect this to these right okay so let's just go ahead and do that real quick and so i'm going to go ahead and cut off uh the red and the black from here now you can use any wires i'm just using these ones because i happen to have them handy you use whichever ones you want and i'm going to go ahead and prep the pins by tinning them up so i'm going to put some flux paste right here just dip these pins in just like that okay and make sure that we have this set again with the groove so that we know that, all right, so the far one on this side is gonna be the red one. So if you put the pins down, this will be red right here, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and get that ready and I'm gonna put my little nerd glasses on so that you guys don't, so I don't block the camera, okay? So let's do that. And let me get my solder iron here. And I believe we are almost at our temperature, there we go. Okay, and then we get some solder, which is right here. I know there's a button, there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and just drop some solder right here. And you don't wanna hold this too long because it'll start actually melting that plastic. And let's just go ahead and do the ground as well while we can. Okay, there we go. Don't need a lot, just that right there. Let me put that back up real quick. Now let's grab our wiring here. And first thing I wanna do is go ahead and get this tinned as well. So let me go ahead and put some flux paste on here. And let's see if we can just get this wire to kind of stay 
without me having to use it. Oh, you know what? I'll just use the helping hands. I'm trying to show everybody, especially we got some new students that are watching and I want them to see how to do it properly. So let's just go and do it like this. All right, so we use our helping hands and let's go ahead and turn this wire up a little bit. Okay, just like that. All right. And then what we can do is we can, there's a couple different ways. Now me, I'm just gonna go ahead and attach this to here so I can use the uh, this as a holder. And I'm just gonna go ahead, make sure I've got these the same. Yep, okay, so here we go. We're just gonna go ahead and attach the black here, solder that on. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and tin the red now. go all right so now our main power leads are done so the only thing left to really do is get rid of the middle pin because we're not going to be using that at all so let's go ahead and see the easiest way I'm gonna see if this will push through uh, and I'm hoping it will but you know what it looks like it's on there pretty solid if not I could always cut it but I'd like it to just push yeah it's uh, it's not gonna push through okay well I'll tell you what let me just see if I can get that out of there now because now I've done bent the pin there we go oh and I pulled it through there you go okay so it pulled through without any issues okay so there's our connection there now we're gonna go ahead and heat shrink that so just find yourself some small heat shrink and it doesn't really matter to match the color guys I'm not uh, you know I'm gonna look for one that fits in this case I've got a yellow so I'm just gonna use this yellow and I'm gonna cut it down to size here just like that Feed this down. Let's go ahead and feed the other one down. Just like that. All right. All right, so now we've got our heat shrink on. Connection is pretty solid here. I will most likely put one more heat shrink around this, but I'm gonna put some hot glue in there first. So let me, uh, now let's get to the next step, okay? So the next step is gonna be that we wanna join these to here, right? And so the, the main thing that we wanna do first is we gotta figure out how we're gonna route this wire in. Okay, so I guess what we can do if we wanna keep it on the same side as the USB, is now I'm gonna change it from what I usually do because like I said, mine's down here, but I, I think for aesthetic purposes, everybody will want it to be as short as wire possible. So let's go ahead and make the dot and let's come in. Um, and I like to be exact about this. So let me get my ruler real quick. All right. Oh, and I need a permanent marker. So give me one second. Okay, so what we're gonna to wanna to do, is we're gonna to wanna to come in, let's just say we're gonna go about uh, 20 millimeters down from the, the spot here of the USB. So that's gonna be, let's do it like this, 20 millimeters down. It'll be right about here. And then let's go about 10 millimeters in or 15 millimeters in should be somewhere around right here. Okay, now let's look at that. And I think we're gonna be just fine with that actually. So, put this away from the So Okay, so we're gonna go, and I'm just gonna write on here because it doesn't matter to me. So we're gonna go 20 millimeters down. And then what did I say? We we're gonna go from the edge about, well, I guess we'll go from the edge about 15 millimeters from the edge in and then about 15 millimeters in from here. 
Okay, so use that, I guess, as your guide there. But you want to go 20 millimeters down from this section and then 15 millimeters down from this section. All right, let's just try that and see what happens. All right, so now let me go get a little drill here. Whatever size wiring you're using, feel free to use that size bit. I'm just going to pick a standard one. I'm not really worried about it, but let me take this base off now. Push that out of the way, and let's just drill it very easy. Okay, let's clean it up. All right, we're all the way through. I think that looks good. Now I can wipe the um, get rid of this mess right here. All right, now let me get an alcohol wipe here because I want to wipe these markings which off my controller. So let's do that. And I'll get the rest of it cleaned up in a little bit. Let's get back to that. Okay, so got a little bit extra uh, little side pieces here. You can just kind of clean out on your own. Okay, but the main thing is to make sure that our wire fits through this, and it looks like it's going to be just fine. All right, so with our wire fitting, I want to go ahead and try to lay this out as you know what would be uh, comfortable for us and what, what looks good. And then from there, what I think we're going to do is <clears throat> let's go ahead and run. A, um, another heat shrink, right? And I don't know if this one's gonna be good enough or not. I'm just gonna see what sizing works here. So this is gonna, I think, be too small maybe for what I'm hoping it does, but uh, well, that might be okay because that'll get me to cover the wire as it goes through that opening, which I have no problem with then. So let me do that. Okay, so now we can fit this through, just like this. So that's gonna sit nicely right there, which will then allow us to plug in directly, okay? Right here, like that. Um, and now it's time to make this look presentable, right? So what we know is that we're gonna wanna tack this wire down and we're gonna wanna make sure that it stays out of the way of everything. So we're gonna go on the outside of the screw here. We just wanna check our, uh, how we're gonna run it. We're gonna go on the outside of the screw. We don't wanna get in the way of the, um, of the sticks. So as we go down, we're gonna come down, around, and then we could probably bring it to about right there. And I think that should be okay, but we're gonna go ahead and check this just to be sure. The other option is to come on the outside like this, which would also be just fine as long as we can get it out of the way of the sticks, right? So let me just see the best way to run this. For you guys so that you don't have any issues with the sticks okay i would say the best way to run this and i'm going to give this a shot using hot glue and then uh, my goal here is going to be to run it straight down to the center because we have this wire here so my best shot is going to be to leave this as flat as possible and run it to here and because we're going to be doing that i'm going to go ahead now and get the connections run to attach it to the um, to the board, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. Let me find my other piece, wherever it went. I will find it here in a second. There it is. Okay, so we've got our two pieces which are gonna connect to the board, and I'm gonna use one side for the ground and one side for the positive, okay? And so I'm going to take, where's my wire strippers at? Oh, my tools are all over the place, here we go. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to strip back a little bit of this here. Okay. And be sure to get your um, uh, heat shrink ready because you will not be able to fit it over the other pieces once you do the work. Let's go ahead and get that on there. Okay. And we'll use this one for our positive.
Okay, I'm going to use the flux paste here. All right. Now we'll go ahead and dip this in the flux paste, and we're going to tin these up real quick, right? So let me go ahead and get that done. cool there we go so there's one and I do want to um, pull this ground off so I'm gonna lift this up a little bit and try to get this ground out there we go that way I don't even have to have the ground there okay and then now we're gonna do the same on the ground side with the other plug let's go ahead and strip that one back Put a little flux paste on there and find the other plug and this time we're going to remove the positive from the plug because all we need is the ground okay Put some flux paste on that we'll tin both of these up Don't forget, you still have to put your heat shrink on the ground, or else if you attach them, you're not gonna be able to fit it over the plug. So let's go ahead and tin that. Okay, and as soon as that cools down, I'll put the heat shrink on there. Let's tin this one as well. All right. Slide the heat shrink on. There we go. And now we can attach this one as well. Wait for it to cool. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and just bring our heat shrink up and make sure these are covered perfectly. Now that we're done with that, we can go ahead and run these. Now I want to, I'm gonna protect my wire here a little bit more because I'm noticing it's kind of a little flaky in here. I'm just gonna put some hot glue right here just because I don't like what I'm seeing with that. And so that's just for me because I think maybe as I was pulling on it or something, I must have made that come a little loose. That's all right. Just let that sit a minute and then I'm gonna clean up this. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this. Try to run it pretty smoothly down here. So let's go ahead and do that. Make sure I have enough here. So I'm going to actually, for right now, just to hold this, and you can always reheat it too, but I'm just gonna put this on here, and I could have used double-sided tape actually, but because I have the glue gun in my hand, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna hold this right here so it's got, it's got a spot here. That way I know how much wire I have to work with. All right, that looks like it's good for now. And so now what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and see how we wanna run this. Uh, let's see, so we'll run it flat down here.
Okay, make sure that stays and that looks good. I'll keep that back down. I had a feeling that may not stay, but that's all right. He gave me what I needed to make sure that we're using the right amount. Okay, so now let's get back to my nerd goggles and see what we got. All right, so we know that we have this harness that's going to plug in around the same area, so I'm kind of just going to follow that, uh, follow that lead there. So let's go this way. Uh, we will take these and we will kind of just keep them right in this area here. and I put the hot glue on like that is because I'm gonna hit it with the gun and it's gonna spread a little bit easier and flatten out the way I want it to, okay? So just make sure you let it cool now. Yeah, it's still not cool. Well, we're gonna give it a minute. <clears throat> get all these glue strings out of here okay so the idea now is that we want this to sit nicely right here right and so in order to do that we're going to go ahead and get ready to attach everything i just need this glue to kind of dry <clears throat> and uh I know that my main cable is going to go in the center right there, the one that we did, the ribbon that we detached, and then we're going to put these back in just like they were, right? So um, the only difference is I may go on different sides this time because it looks like the way I've got it done, the black is going to go on the other side than it was before. So let me go ahead and get those plugged in now. I think the glue's, uh, glue's okay to use. So let's go ahead and just get everything plugged back in. Try to get this to stop moving around on me. I think the first thing we'll do is we'll plug in the batteries. So let's go ahead and get that down there. Let me see if I can. I'm trying to do it so that you guys can see. So I think that'll work just like that, actually. If you guys can see that happening. So we're going to go ahead and put our ground in. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and put our positive in. Perfect. And then we're going to go ahead and plug our ribbon cable back in. Let's see. There we go. Okay, cables are in. Everything looks good. So now the main thing is to just get it all plugged in. Make sure everything else is set properly. Don't want any of these ribbons or anything to be getting in the way. Looks good. So now, close it up. All right. Closes up well. That definitely sits well. All our functions are still good. Get rid of these glue strings here. Okay, so now it's time to just put the screws back in. So we're gonna go ahead and knock that out. Let me turn the slide off. And away here we go. For these screws, the smaller ones went with the um, the brackets here. So let's just go ahead and make sure that we you will. But I guess basically what I'm saying is you are going to have screws left over. So don't be surprised when that happens. Don't think that you forgot something. Okay. Okay, so we got one, two. I did put this one in, right? No, not yet. Yes, I did. Okay, so one, two, three, four. And then let me see where else I've got. I've got the two at the top and the two on the bottom. So let me put the two on the bottom first. Two 
on the top. I believe these are going to be the shorter ones, so let's go ahead and just try those. Let me make sure that that's right. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Hold on a second. I think I put the wrong one. Let me do the other side real quick. For right now, I'll deal with it. I don't want to slow the video down for that. It's my bad. <laughs> Leave the short screws out. Use the long screws like that, and you'll be set. I use the two short screws or one of them by accident. All right. Once you're done with that and you've got your stuff back in there, go ahead and uh, put the rubber grips back in. Pop in the tabs like normal. I am going to get that screw out. Now it's going to bother me, but... No sense in keeping you guys hostage while I do that. I'll just let you know how long it took me later. Uh, make sure to push the tabs in all the way. All right, there we go. Everything looks good. So now looking at it, right? I mean, if you clean this up, looking at it, there's no sign on this side that it's that anything's been done it looks good everything looks good right so now what we're going to do is i can now go ahead and go and, and put this back i didn't hold it long enough to glue it um and i will or else i can use double-sided tape like i said um, but i'm going to just go ahead and try to tack it down with glue real quick and see if it'll hold so let me go ahead and just do that let's see if i can keep it down there and what i'll do is i'll uh this time since i won't be moving it around i'll hold it and then um this up I'll hold it and then what I'll do is I'll come around the edges here like this just kind of give it some glue I mean I am a big hot glue fan I just think it's awesome great invention it's like double-sided tape and velcro it's a necessity now uh, only thing I have to be careful of is that this build up right here I have to get away so I can fit this in right all right so now with the battery as far as the battery goes now quantum for example makes these little pouches um, or you can make these little, you can make a little housing for th a 3d housing, whichever you prefer to do. Uh, I did have a 3d housing for a different battery, but for this one, to be honest with you, I'm not really sure what I want to do at this point. Um, because it's not really that big of an issue because the battery is so light. Uh, but let me see. Uh, I would most likely, I don't know. I mean, like I've got a solution here. that's very simple. Let me grab this real quick. So I've got some very uh, high end, like industrial Velcro. Oh wait, you got to call it hook and latch. I think when you're not using um, the actual Velcro brand. So this is not Velcro brand. This is actually a bit stronger. Um, and so I'm just going to use this temporarily until I decide if I want to use a, um, a uh, make a housing for this or not. But I will put two strips on. Okay. I think these are going to be too big. Yeah. Okay. So the way I see it is if you're going to use the same battery style like I do, then and I always put the soft side on the battery and then the, I guess the, the, the latch side or the hook side, I don't know, whatever. I put the, the, more, the softer side on the battery itself and figure out which side I'm talking about. I have no idea. Just like that, right? It's that, it's that furry side, the material, whatever. And my sausage fingers have to peel this back now. All right, so there we go. Do that, just like that, okay? Now, I'll peel that off. If I can get to it, good Lord. I'm telling you guys with skinnier fingers, God bless you, because this is impossible. All right, so I'll put the battery, you know, somewhere like this. Just like that, okay, and then peels off and go ahead, slide my connector in. And that, that resistance there is the glue because I put the glue a little bit, a little more glue than I really needed. Put that right there. You can do anything you want with this one. I mean, I, I, I'll probably tie that down or whatever, but there's my battery. And now, when I power up, there we go, all my stuff is in one place. 
and I'll keep that down. But there you go. So I have, you can see my, you can see my voltage. Um, everything looks good, right? And uh, everything's functioning properly. So uh, I have no problems here at all. Let me, let me kind of get over, there we go. There we go. So we're at our main screen right now and we've got our new LiPo battery that we can charge. And we've bypassed the, um, the uh, batteries in there, okay? So that's pretty much how it works, guys. Hit me up if you have any questions on this one. Uh, sorry, I know it's not the cutest or hottest build by any means, but it is a great workaround and it does give you the ability to swap your batteries out instead of having to charge uh, your uh, uh, transmitter in the USB, right? And then be stuck without using it. So there you go. If you have any questions, like I said, hit me up. You can email me at Tark at cyclonfpv.com. Uh, also, please support me by following uh, my YouTube channel at, uh, well, right there, cyclonfpv. And then, does that mean like or, oh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my Facebook. I'm, I'm gonna get it one day, I promise. Okay, other than that, guys, remember, spend time with your family. God bless, you never know how much time you have with them, so make as much time as you can with them today, okay? See you later. Safe flight. Bye.